Kristen of Alliance Defending Freedom. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Well, thanks for having me. Yes. Okay, you tweeted April 19th, the Biden admin can't redefine quote unquote sex in Title IX without affecting women's opportunities, including women's sports. Under these rule changes, privacy, safety, parental rights, free speech, and yes, women's sports are at risk. This is an abuse of federal power that is anti-women, anti-science, and anti-logic. See you in court at POTUS. And it was that last sentence that really in the midst of just a lot of discouragement, seeing this rule change and as a mom of daughters, just kind of feeling this moment of fear that I thought, okay, but we've got people on our side and in our corner that are going to fight this. You are one of those people. Before we get to the fight aspect of this, though, how you guys are going to push back Give us a little bit of an explainer, like what is Title IX for those who may not know? And then wh how, what does this rule change really mean? Because we've seen some conflicting reports on that. Right. Well, I mean, it's over 1,500 pages of regulations. So to, to take us back to Title IX and what it is, Title IX is a law that was put in place in 1972. It was passed by Congress, and it was designed to ensure women have equal opportunities. So it, present, it, it prohibits sex discrimination and ensures that women have equal opportunities in educational institutions that are receiving federal funding. So obviously that applies to sports. Um, and we know in, in the 70s, women didn't have equal opportunities in terms of scholarships and just uh, the ability to be able to have comparable programs in women's sports like the men did. But it also plays out in other areas of educational institutions, including even being admitted into some of these institutions. And so Title IX has had a significant impact on ensuring that women have equal access and equal opportunities. And pre predominantly, it has involved women's sports. In addition to that, it, it carves out essentially that in a number of different instances, um, sex-based distinctions are appropriate under the law because the law recognizes the truth that we are all created equal and in God's image, but we are created differently. There are differences between um, the two sexes. And so the law pro pro prohibits sex discrimination. In terms of what's happened in more recent years, we have seen progressively left administrations try to twist Title IX to take away those benefits and those opportunities from women and instead say it's no longer about sex-based discrimination, but it's about gender identity. And that completely turns Title IX on its head. And we can talk about all the ways it does that, but mm -hmm. it started in the Obama administration, actually, mm -hmm. where we started to see guidelines come out. And you may remember bathroom talk and right. you know, boys being admitted into girls. So that's when it started. And that was through a guideline process. Then um, the Trump administration essentially shored up the rule and interpreted the rule consistent with what Congress intended in the way it had always been interpreted. And now we're in the Biden administration, which has radically redefined sex and gutted those protections once again for women. How does the Bostock decision play into this from 2020? And if I remember correctly, it was Gorsuch, who, of course, was a Trump appointee, who went the direction that we conservatives, constitutionalists, would not have liked him to go in saying that sex can be interpreted to also mean so-called gender identity. That's a part of all of this, too, right? It is, and it's so disturbing to see the results of Bostock. Um, it, Alliance Defending Freedom has had the privilege of representing parties in a number of different Supreme Court cases in the last 12 years and have had 15 victories. Our one loss was Bostock, to be candid, and it was a heartbreaking loss, and mm -hmm. it was unprecedented in terms of how the court interpreted a statute that said sex discrimination to suddenly include gender identity as well as sexual orientation. Now. However, I think when um, Justice Gorsuch wrote that decision, which was a shock to conservatives that he would take that position, he also, I think, thought that potentially the court could limit the impact of that and in the decision itself um, suggest that sex-based distinctions may be appropriate in the law as well as protecting the rights of uh, First Amendment rights, religious freedom rights in this context. And so since that decision, we have had to litigate all around the edges of that Bostock decision. 
And to be clear, Bostock was under Title VII, which is applying to employers. It doesn't apply outside of the employment context, Mm -hmm. and the court's decision said that. It also has slightly different language than Title IX has, and in addition to the slightly different language, a difference between because of sex and on the basis of sex, mm-hmm. Title IX, as I referenced, specifically calls out that there, I- there are reasons that are legitimate reasons to make biological distinctions in the context of educational institutions. Mm-hmm. So there are some very clear differences between Bostock, a Title VII statute, and a Title IX statute that applies to educational institutions. But Bostock is a terrible decision, and we're hoping that the court will reverse it. Right. Okay. And so this is, even though they are two um, different things, they still correlate in that we are seeing this trend that you said started in the Obama era to redefine sex. And so we are seeing this in a variety of ways. And now this redefinition has come specifically for Title IX. This is something that has been debated and discussed, at least I've seen for the past maybe couple of years. You've probably been privy to that conversation a lot longer than I have. Um, And we kind of anticipated that this was about to happen, that they were going to make this announcement that they have now change Title IX, correct? Correct. Yes, we have been anticipating it. And actually, the first lawsuit that we filed was all the way back in 2019. Hmm. Um, And we represent, we continue to represent these athletes, um, three Connecticut, well, now four Connecticut um, high school athletes at the time that were running track. And two boys came in and transitioned from competing in the, the boys category and three weeks later moved into the girls category and in just a period of a couple seasons took 15 state championships, took opportunities to advance, 85 opportunities to advance from different girls and four state championships from one of our clients. So that's when we first got involved in this issue and we have continued to see it escalate. And there are a number of cases that are being filed right now, including another one of our cases um, called BPJ, which comes out of the Fourth Circuit. And we can certainly talk about that, but I think you can expect that case to go to the Supreme Court as well. Hmm. How I have seen this change interpreted by many on the left and in what you would call the mainstream media is that this change really doesn't affect women's privacy rights, their ability to compete against one another, that it's really just protecting what they would call, I don't know, gender nonconforming, transgender students, whatever, from harassment. That's all it's about. It's limited. I was told even by some conservatives when I originally posted about this, that this is fear mongering, that this is blowing things out of proportion, that this change is not a big deal. It's not that controversial. I know it's 1,500 pages of regulations, as you said, but break it down for us. What is this change actually? Well, having practiced in these areas for many years now in the areas of constitutional law, there aren't very many things that really make me angry. Um, This is one of them. Mm. Um, Because as a parent, um, the implications of this rule are staggering on our children as a woman It denies us of equal opportunities and says that a man's feelings can trump our rights as to be equally treated under the law and to have privacy. And it shames women for saying we are different and we are equal and tells us to go and sit down and shut up and stop complaining about this. It is immoral and it is unconstitutional. The way that it plays out in terms of this particular, these particular rules is it tells us that if you have your children in any institution from kindergarten through 12th grade, all the way through college, and that institution receives any federal aid whatsoever, that these institutions now have to open up their locker rooms to boys who identify as girls. And we've had real cases where this has happened and girls have suffered as a result. It tells your kids that they have to use the wrong pronouns, that their speech is mandated in different ways. It now means there's no longer a boy's PE class and a girl's PE class, which increases the risk of harm and injury. Um, There are so many different ways that it clearly applies in these instances that the suggestion of fear mongering is, again, it's just an effort to try to force people to to be quiet and to not say the quiet part out loud, which is you're defying biological reality and you are crushing women and girls in the process. So there's no fear mongering. You're spot on to be calling this out. It also is likely going to impact women's sports. And this suggestion, you know, I think maybe what you're hearing as well. 
the guidelines or the, or the regulations don't explicitly say that they apply to sports right now. Well, who cares? I mean, that's just political pandering because the Biden administration has already said very clearly that the, this redefinition does apply to sports. That's the BPJ case that I just referenced. Right now, we are litigating a case that is going to be heading up likely to the U.S. Supreme Court soon, and the Department of Justice has taken the position that a boy who decided that he was going to identify as a girl has now displaced a number of kids in that particular school in the track and field competitions. And the DOJ, the Department of Justice, has said that's just fine because sex includes gender identity and women no longer have the right to be able to participate in their own sports. They get to be sidelined. Yes. Sorry, I just get it. I, it is Do it's not stunning apologize. to me. I'm, we got to have people stand up on this because it just there are so much implications. I, I, one more thing, Allie, that Please. I need to mention that is so concerning about this is the guide, the the regulations themselves actually embrace secret transition policies. Mm. I, I'm sure you've seen the cases that are going on. We're litigating a host of cases right now where school districts are adopting these policies and they're secretly transitioning kids and lying to the parents. Mm. The Biden administration regulation endorses that in the regulation itself. Oh my goodness. 